Welcome. I thought I'd begin this particular video in the office uh, as I explore a recent visit to Dartmoor. And um, it put me in mind of an old adage that the best camera is the one that you have with you. It wasn't a particular spe particularly spectacular trip. Um, I did get one or two nice photographs uh, from it, which you'll see at the end of the video. And I'd be interested to know uh, whether or not you can work out which photographs were taken with my Nikon D750 and which photographs were taken with my Sony RX10 Mark IV bridge camera. If you've been following my channel for a while, uh, then you'll probably know uh, that I've been going through this internal debate for a long time about uh, the Sony RX10 Mark IV versus uh, a full frame Nikon. And I know that they are not like for like cameras. Uh, but one thing that this particular ship, uh, ship, one thing that this particular trip really showed up for me uh, was that the best camera that you have is the one you've got in your hand when you need it. And, uh, and on this particular trip, uh, the photographs that I like the most uh, have come from the Sony uh, rather than from the Nikon. Uh, it's not necessarily that they're better technically, but compositionally and opportunistically, uh, they have managed to turn out better. Uh, because I happen to have procured a method for keeping uh, the Sony uh, very easily to hand whilst I'm out and about walking uh, by attaching it to a strap on my, uh, on my rucksack. And so whenever an opportunity arises for a photograph, uh, my Sony with its amazing um, focal length range uh, from the equivalent of about 18 mil up to 600 mil, which is just insane, um, is the one that I tend to keep handy uh, because it's such a versatile camera. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video and I, do, I just find it interesting um, to see in the comments which of the photographs in the final slideshow uh, you reckon are Sony and which ones are Nikon. Enjoy the video. Well, I'm back here, and um, it's not the first time I've said that. So welcome back to Meldon Reservoir. And um, I was last here, end of September 2021. And part of the reason that I'm back uh, is because I want to go and camp at Salt and Tor, or Salt and Tours again, uh, where I camped last time. And uh, part of the reason for that is I kind of attempted a bit of a hurried sunset shoot and so it just didn't really work out and um, I kind of messed around setting up cat camp too, too long and by the time I was ready to photograph the light had just gone I missed it by minutes so I'm hoping for better light tonight Well, having said what a quiet path this was, I just had to pause three times to let uh, people by because it's quite narrow and on quite a slope, so uh, it's tricky. Everyone commenting on how hot it is and just how low the water is. Just about to arrive at Salton Tours and uh, what an amazing view as you come up and over the hill. Well I've got to say that was a hard day. I had uh, Covid for I think the third time not too long ago and uh, a hard march today up and down these hills has been has been quite tricky so I'm really ready for some food 
and especially my slightly ridiculous little piece of luxury here, which is this strap chair that just wraps around my sleeping mat. And right now, I reckon it's the best thing I've brought with me because I really needed to sit down comfortably. You know, it's just absolutely brilliant. I love it. Well, I think it was about, I bought it used, I think, for about £35 or something on eBay. And it's worth every penny. Anyway, I'm eating a uh, <coughs> Chinese special fried rice with a tin of tuna flakes mixed into it. Uh, it's just perfect for right now. Uh, it's grey. There's a little chink of light on the horizon, but nothing, nothing that is going to create any sort of a, a light for sunset. But you know what? I'm just going to chill. Uh, it doesn't have to be an amazing photograph every time. We shall see what the dawn brings, but I think right now I just need to rest, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Finish my meal and have a rest. Ah, so after that meal, I've got a bit of a second wind and a little bit of a rest, uh, just in time for what passes for sunset. I quite like this composition here. Let's see if I can show you it. So with the tent on the... Uh, Kind of left, bottom left, and um, on a, this outcrop that I'm sheltering behind uh, in the foreground. And there's a nice sort of lead in line to it in the uh, in terms of this line of rocks coming in, so I quite like that. Uh, and then with the let's give a wider angle here, that's kind of more like what I'm seeing in the camera. Uh, and then the, obviously the sun setting uh, <coughs> in the background over there. So I think they might make quite a nice twilight picture, even though I don't think we're really going to get the sky lighting up because of that band of cloud. Uh, I think what we will get is some quite nice glow on the horizon. And, uh, and I'll match that with a bit of a glow in the tent. So I've got some low-level lights there that I can put in the tent there. And I think that might look quite nice, actually. Focus point just on my tent in the foreground there. And uh, refocus. There we go. I'm going to give a little bit more light now. And... Right, so we'll take first shot. focus. Do you know, I wish I had touch screen on this. And then refocus on the rocks here. And fire. Oh, I'm not sure what happened then. There we go. Okay. In fact, just for good measure, let's do one at infinity as well. Just focus a long way away. Excuse me, a lot of fiddling around here. Refocus and release. So, what settings am I on? Let's just talk you through this. Um, so we're on manual and uh, <coughs> we've got a half second shutter speed at the moment. That's been Varying obviously as the light gets dimmer. Uh, we're at f11 uh, in terms of aperture. I think that's a fairly sweet spot for this lens, uh, which is by the way the 20 millimeter f1.8 fixed length. Uh, ISO is 100, and I'm fiddling around with some filters on the front here. I can't help myself because we've got a nice straight horizon, so I've put a hard edge. Um, neutral density two stop filter on there. And I've also put, just to give a little bit more zazz zip to the colors, I've also put the polarizer, circular polarizer on. 
um, and uh, and then I'm uh, using my uh, shutter remote shutter release cable release uh, just to make sure that we don't jog anything unfortunately um, we do have to have this column up here uh, that's where it kind of needed to be uh, for height just to make sure that the rocks stayed below the horizon so uh, there you go quite a, well, I was about to say quite a simple setup really it's not is it <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing simple about it really starting to get reasonably chilly now so I'm glad I did bring some additional layers with me um, I've got a, a feather down uh, stuffed feather down jacket with me as well as the shell that I'm wearing I've got a t-shirt I can put on as well uh, but I have brought my summer weight um, what's it called sleeping bag brains going now there's one or two sheep up there who don't seem to be terribly impressed that I am um, I'm camped where I am they keep bleating they've been staring me out for a while I think they're kind of hoping I might disappear but I am here to stay missing Mrs sheep well I had a bit of a change of plan there and uh, moved a bit down the slope uh, so that I could get more of the I could make more of the tent um, because there really isn't that much happening on the horizon now and uh, decided I would allow these stones to pop up above the horizon because I think in Lightroom with its new sky selection features and stuff it really shouldn't be a problem dealing with that. I mean, the, the sky itself is quite interesting with these clouds but there's just really no colour to to work with, I'm afraid. Um, but as just as predicted, it is just sort of fading to grey. It's just going to be a twilight shot with a little bit of light in the tent. Good morning, it's about 4.40 a.m., something like that. So sunrise is in about 50 minutes or so. I don't think it's gonna show its face this morning because uh, it's uh, pretty much 100% cloud cover. Uh, but there is the possibility, because it's got quite a bit colder overnight, there is a possibility that there might be some low level ground mist down in the vale below so um, I'm gonna have an early breakfast in the hope that uh, by the time I finish that there might be enough light to start to show that up but certainly I'm pretty sure we're not going to see colour in the sky this morning uh, but nevertheless uh, not too bad a night a uh, few hours sleep uh, despite one or two rocks underneath my mat <laughs> And being on a bit of a slope, um, not too bad, all things considered. Uh, even had a little bit of a, uh, a lawn mow, courtesy of some sheep during the night, here munching just outside the tent. So I actually decided to do things the other way around, uh, but there wasn't really enough ground fog um, happening, uh, I think, to, to make that worth waiting for, and that instead, uh, what I would do uh, while there was still some darkness about is try a little bit of light painting on these rocks behind me and on the foreground and uh, with some long exposures. So stuck with 100 ISO and did some kind of 20, 25 second uh, exposures and uh, wandered around with my torch making shapes also a little bit of uh, low level lighting as well uh, by which i mean these little led panels 
that I brought with me uh, just to add some sort of, not permanent, but some constant lighting on parts of the scene uh, as well. We'll see how it, uh, we'll see how that pans out. It may or may not work, uh, but you've got to try these things, haven't you? Well, there you go. Porridge, coffee, bread, fruit, comfy seat, beautiful surroundings. What more could you ask for? Good morning. You know, it's a cool business sometimes, photography. I've packed up and I've gone, I've left it behind me, and now there's a little bit of light creeping in over there, look. The white horse show over there. Oh, just as he says that, a brown one pops up. <laughs> Apologies, we get a little bit of wind noise uh, on this, but this is just my closing piece, really. I've had a great night, it's been so good to come out again. And uh, my microphone has uh, run out of battery and all that kind of stuff, so hence the sound's probably a bit different. Thank you for joining me on this little trip. Like, subscribe, all of those kind of things. And uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.